Welcome to the second day of Selenium training. In the first day, we had seen various things like how to install Java, how to work with Eclipse, how to use various data types and all. We saw a lot of things on first day, right? So we also saw why Selenium is used and with with all with which all languages is it supported and why do we use it with Java language? Fine. We started with the basics of Java and I told you some basic basic stuff. Now we'll move forward and we'll move forward to some of the advanced topics, okay, like loops, arrays, functions, and all. And as we proceed with this, we will we'll also discuss why do we you need to study these topics while studying Selenium and where all in Selenium will be will we be using this? Okay. So let's go to Eclipse and in a, in my Eclipse I'll create a new project called Module 2. Okay, click on new project and click next module 2 and finish. So this will create a new project called module 2. Inside it again I have a source folder. Okay, inside the source folder I can create as many Java files as I want to create. Okay, so I write over here, right click new class and I name my class as <coughs> concatenation operator. Okay, now I'll tell you about concatenation now. What is concatenation in Java? Okay, suppose I write over here that I have a string called x equals to in double quotes hello fine and a string called y equals to in double quotes world okay and i want to type hello world in one line okay so i can write system dot out dot print ln x plus y plus is the concatenation operator we saw in the previous class as well we were concatenating various strings and the numbers and all everything Okay, if I have two integers, int a equals to 100 and int b equals to 200. And after that I write over here system.out.println a plus b. So the result out here would be, when I run the code, it will print hello world and 300. It will add a and b. Okay, but there is a catch over here. Okay, if you write system dot out dot print ln a plus b plus x plus y. Okay, and you write system dot out dot print ln x plus y plus a plus b. Okay, and you run the code. You look at the last two lines of output. They are pretty different. You, they would not be up to your expectations. The first line over here a plus b will add a then concatenate it with x then concatenate it with y. So this prints 300 hello world over here. Okay. But the next line the execution starts from the left side x and y are concatenated and then it is concatenated with the value of a that is 100 and then it is concatenated with the value of b that is 200. So there is a potential difference between these two lines. Have, have I had I written like this a plus b and in the bracket x plus y like this and I would have run this code then it would have uh, printed sorry uh, uh, a little mistake over here x plus y plus a plus b and a plus b inside the bracket and if I would have executed this it would have printed hello world 300 now I, can, I have to give it in brackets okay so you you can get an error while working on selenium and you might get confused when you are trying to print something your test data or whatever it is right so you have to be very very careful while using the concatenation operator okay it never adds up directly okay with especially with strings right so now we will move further and we will look at loops Till now, whatever I am teaching you is present in almost all the programming languages. Okay, the real Java, the real Java will actually start from the module three. That is when I cover object-oriented programming concepts. All right. So now 
Let's move further and move to loops. I'll take up the example of while loop. You must have studied while loop sometime in your career, maybe in your college times or if you had been a developer, right? But if you don't know about while loop, don't worry, I'll take it from the very beginning. Okay, while loop. In while loop, the, the first thing which we do is we initialize a variable. This step is known as initialization. Fine. And after that, I will write a while loop like this. While i is less than 10 brackets system.out.println value of i and then increment the value of i by 1. Now what does this condition mean? This condition tells you that till the time the value of i is less than 10, keep on running the while loop, keep on printing the value of i and increment it by the value of by, by 1. Okay, so when I run it, it prints numbers from 0 to 9 in the output. Okay, so basically while loop is something which will keep on running itself till the time a certain condition is satisfied. So this is known as the condition part. And this is known as the incrementation or decrementation part. Right? So while loop is something which will keep on executing itself. Now I can see the execution of this while loop by debugging the program. Okay? What is debugging? That is run the program line by line as per the way you want it to run, the way you want it to be controlled. Okay, for that you need to double click in front of this line. When you double click, you get a small dot. This is known as a breakpoint. A breakpoint in your process. Right? Now, in order to debug this program, you need to move over to debug perspective in Eclipse. Right? You click on this icon on the top, open perspective and select other if you don't have debug visible over here click on other and you will see the debug perspective out here okay you click on ok and your eclipse window will look like this now on the top i have a variables tab and a breakpoints tab in the breakpoints tab it is telling me i have put a breakpoint on line number 9 on my while loops dot java in the variable point in the variable tab it is the variable tab is currently blank now if i have to run this program in debug view and see the execution of this program line by line then i need to click on this small icon okay this bug icon on the small the small bug icon and you click on it and the program execution stops over here you see the line is green in color out here, right? So that means the program execution has stopped. If I press F6, it will execute that line. And you see on the top in the variable section, the value of i right now is 0. Okay? When I press F6 again, this goes inside the while loop. F6 again, see, it prints the value of i in console. Now again when I press F6, it will increment the value of i by 1. Okay, When I press F6, you see that it is incrementing it by 1. In the variable section on the top, it is the value of i is 2 now. So I can keep on pressing F6. In the console, the output will also be printed and on the top, you will be seeing the variable value as well. Now debugging is very strong, it is very powerful concept and you need to learn it because while writing your big selenium scripts, when you write automate your test cases, you can get an error. To resolve that error, you will need to debug your program. You will need to see the execution of your program line by line. Okay, so now this is the breakpoint which I have established. Or the debug point okay I will again run it and the control stops over here when I press F6 it runs line by line right 
now suppose i don't want to run bit line by line i want it to run normally just like a normal java program so for that you press f8 if i press f8 it will just run normally and terminate okay so this is very powerful i have taken it on a very small example okay you can actually when you make big scripts using selenium you will actually come to know where exactly the practical usage is fine i will move back to the old perspective that is the java perspective when i click on this we will get the old window right so this is a simple while loop instead of writing i equals to i plus 1 i can also write i plus plus this means post increment operator that means i mean uh, the value of i has to be incremented by 1 that means increment the value of i by 1 it is one of the same thing there is a little difference we we'll look at the difference in some time fine now i can also initialize the value of i with 10 and give the condition that till the value of i is greater than 0 keep on decrementing the value of i and when i run this this will run it in the opposite order from 10 to 1 okay so now let us look at another loop which is a for loop before looking at it i'll tell you the disadvantage of while loop the disadvantage of while loop is that suppose if i don't give this condition then my loop is stuck in a infinite then i am stuck in a infinite loop okay if i run the while loop now it will keep on printing 10 infinitely i have to forcibly stop this program with the help of this terminate button so this is a disadvantage of while loop that you can be stuck in a infinite loop all right so now if you look at your default package and you make a new class and you name that class as for loop for loop will overcome this is disadvantage of while loop right you can write over here a for loop like this for int i equals to 0 semicolon i less than say 10 semicolon i plus plus so out here i am giving the initialization separated with the semicolon the condition separated with the semicolon the incrementation or the decrementation operator okay so now i am forced to give everything in one line so now there is no chance of getting stuck in a infinite loop i can write system dot out dot print ln i and when i run this it prints numbers from 1 to 9 the basic motive for both the loops is same but the syntax is different for loop is more famous than a while loop okay for example i have to write a for loop to find sum of first 100 numbers okay i can simply say that int sum is 0 i can assume that sum is 0 in the beginning then i can write a for loop for int n equals to 0 semicolon n less than say 100 because less than equal to 100 because i have to find the sum of first 100 numbers semicolon n plus plus and inside the for loop you can simply write sum equals to sum plus n right and after the for loop you can write sum of first 100 numbers is i can concatenate it with the value of sum right now when i run this this will print sum of first 100 numbers is 50 50 how did this logic work how did this happen you can debug the program for understanding this you can put a breakpoint in front of this line double click in front of this line go to debug perspective okay and debug the program the control will stop on this line right when you press f6 the control will the the one line will run this line will run you see the variable state on the top the value of sum is 0 the value of n is 0 Okay, so zero plus zero will be added here, and the sum will be zero now when the loop runs for the first time. Now, when the loop runs for the second time, the value of n will be one, 
and the value of sum will be 0. So 1 will be added with 0 and the value of sum will now become 1. Now the value of n will become 2 and 2 will be added with 1. So sum becomes 3. n will become 3 now. 3 will be added with 3. So sum becomes 6. n becomes 4. 4 plus 6, 10. So in this manner, the sum each and every time it gets updated with the latest value. If you press F8, it will run normally like a normal Java program and end. Right? So just remove the breakpoint from here, right? And press F8 because every time it is stuck, in, it's, it gets stuck on the next breakpoint. Okay? So that I mean to say that if I put a breakpoint here and I put a breakpoint here, I put two breakpoints. Fine. I run the program in the debug mode. The control stops on this line. If I press F8 now to run it normally, it will run normally but it will stop on the next breakpoint. See that it stopped on the next breakpoint. It was quite fast. Fine. Okay, let me take it over here. Suppose on this line I write system.out.println x. Fine. I put a breakpoint here. So I have two breakpoints. When I debug the program, the control stops on the first breakpoint. If I press F6, it will run line by line. But if I press F8, it will stop on the next breakpoint. And again, if I press F8, it will terminate because there was no breakpoint after this. Okay, so let's move back to the Java perspective. So this is a simple program on your for loop. Okay, that is a for loop to find sum of 100 numbers, a for loop to print first 10 numbers, right? Now I have given lot of exercises when you log in into your account. Okay, uh, let me let me log in okay when you log in into your account you will be seeing an exercise link available over here so my soon i am updating this uh, thing with uh, what do you say interview questions and all everything is coming fine so if you click on this exercises link you will get lot of exercises on module 2 okay you can go and practice these exercises the exercises will be there on the loops and all everything right now some practical examples on loops let us see one practical example that is how can we use loops with selenium where will we be where will we be using a loop in selenium okay suppose i have an excel file okay i have an excel file like this uh, say all right let me create an excel file okay I have an excel file called test data dot xlsx okay and inside this I keep my test data like username for the site and password for the site and the say some other data like your email id okay your zip code and all everything fine so now I have some test data on each and every row while executing stuff with selenium. So soon we will be studying how to read excel files with selenium. So when we read excel files with selenium, with, sorry with java, selenium, read excel files with java to write your data driven scripts in selenium. So while writing the data driven scripts, we will actually be using a for loop to iterate through each and every row number and column number. So using a for loop you will be iterating through the excel sheet so this is one of the major usage of a for loop in selenium while learning it with java right some of you might be again finding this stuff simple so have patience just for some days because there are people who don't have knowledge on selenium 
who don't have knowledge on Java. For them, it is it will be very beneficial, right? So we will be moving over to very advanced topics very soon. Okay, the basics are very very important. Practice from your side until or unless you don't practice, you are not going to reach anywhere. There is no meaning of watching these videos, purchasing these videos, or going for the training until or unless you are not practicing it yourself. Okay, listening to the videos will will actually look very simple to you. Watching me code will look very simple to you. But until or unless you don't do it, that's not going to help you. That's not going to help you to crack an interview. Fine. Okay, let's not waste time. Right and. Another example of for loop can be uh, like you want to repeat a test case with different sets of data. So you use a for loop over there. Okay, we will come over to it. We will come over to it and we'll see what all we can do with a for loop and a while loop. Okay, so just go and do those exercises and come back to me with your doubts in the exercises. Okay, <clears throat> now. going over right going ahead we look at what arrays are okay what is the practical advantage of arrays okay how arrays are used what are arrays and can arrays be used practically with selenium fine so i will make a class called arrays with the main function now what is an array okay suppose again i am having lot of data with me when working with selenium okay i have a username password email and zip code okay so i make a variable called string username equals to something string password i would request you to please keep your microphones on mute fine so i have a string password y y y y over here string say another parameter like email and zip code fine email is something at the rate gmail.com okay and i have a zip code now sometimes you will have lot of data this is just a little bit of data right now this will be very confusing because you suppose you have got 100 fields on your web page and you need to put the values using selenium in those 100 text boxes okay so what exactly will you do you cannot declare 100 different variables right so out there you will be using arrays what is an array okay array is like a it's basically a memory location in which you can store multiple values okay for example an array will look like this it will have sections inside it each and every section can store something okay and each and every section has got an index 0 1 2 3 it is similar to the way like uh, every house has a house number okay these are houses and every house has a house number like house number 0 house number 1 2 3 and all everything and you recognize a house number by its you, re you recognize a house by its house number okay now i can make an array i can make a string array like this string array name or a square bracket equals to new string a square bracket and inside this you have to specify the size i say the size is 5 that means this array has got 5 houses inside it the first house will have the index 0 the second will have index 1 the third has index 2 3 and the last one the fifth house has an index 4 because the indexes are starting from the 0 right so you will have to write str 
0. This is the first house is equals to say the username. So I am putting multiple values inside the inside one variable that is inside one array str 0 1 2 3 and 4 okay suppose you have a test data called city as well city as say london fine so i can put my username password email address a zip code and city name inside the array okay later on when we study something advanced we will actually read the data from the xls file and we will put it inside the array okay we'll read the data from the excel file and we'll put it inside the array now there is a drawback of array the drawback of array is that if the array is of the type string you have to give the maximum capacity if the array is of the type integer out here as well you can only give 4 like or, or you have to give a number that means the number of integers this integer array can hold a string array cannot hold integers an integer array cannot hold strings a character array similarly if I declare a character array like this a character array cannot hold characters sorry a character array sorry a character array cannot hold integers it cannot hold strings okay so an array is for a particular data type okay you cannot store cross data types there is a solution for that i will tell you in some time but one of the major drawbacks is the size of the array sometimes you don't know the amount of data which we will which you will be reading using selenium okay suppose for example I'm giving you a practical example is that uh, suppose you search for uh, say you go to cathaypacificairlines.com you go to airline website and you search for flights between two different stations you want to fly from say New Delhi to London right and you want to select the flights be between different locations you want to see the flight between different locations okay now suppose the system gives you 100 flights and you want to put the prices of all the 100 flights into an array using selenium okay so basically selenium should be reading the cost of the flights from the application and it should be putting the costs of the flights which are coming into the array now you don't know how many flights will come suppose in the first search you get 100 I search it tomorrow I get 50 day after tomorrow I get 150 so you cannot you, you cannot just create a uh, redimensional array like uh, an array which can keep on redimensioning itself right so at that point of time we are stuck with array but as far as your test data is concerned you can definitely keep your test data inside an array because most of the times you know how big your test data is going to be what all fields you require in your test data right now about this array some of the features of arrays that is if I want to find the length of the array using coding okay then I have to write system.out.println str.length and run this this will print 5 that is the string array str array is of the 5 length and if I write system.out.println i dot length integer array dot length it will print 4 that is the length of integer array is 4 if I want to print all the elements of this array of the string array 
I can write a for loop. Okay, I can write for int x equals to 0 semicolon x less than str dot length and x plus plus. That means the value of x will go from 0 to the length of the array. Okay, to 1 less than the length of the array. Why am I starting x from 0? Because the first index in this array is at the is the zeroth index. Okay, and I will simply write system dot out dot print ln str in the square brackets. I will simply put x. So when you run the loop for the first time, okay, when you run it for the first time, x will be zero, so str zero will be printed. When you run it for the second time, x will be 1 and str1 will be printed. Okay, so when you run this, it prints the whole array. Right? Similarly, talking about this integer array, I can def give numbers in this. I can write i0 is equal to 300, i1 equals to some number, and i2. equals to some number i3 is again some number right so 0 1 2 3 these are few indexes inside the index array in, inside the integer array right and i can also write a for loop to print this integer array similarly i can write for int y equals to 0 y less than the integer array i dot length and y plus plus and you can simply write system dot out dot print ln i bracket y i is the array y is the number which is incrementing itself when i run this this will print the integer array as well if i want to print the integer array in reverse that is the last index should be printed first then the second last, then the third last, right? So I, I have to start y with the length of the array minus 1 because the last index will be length minus 1, right? Because the indexes start from 0 and y should be greater than or equal to 0 and y minus minus. So y will start from the length of the array minus 1 that is length is 4, y will start from 3 and it will go to 0 go till 0 so y goes from 3 to 0 and when i run this thing this prints the array in reverse see 1024443333300 right so for the arrays as well i have included lot of exercises for single dimensional arrays two dimensional arrays and all everything Okay, we'll be looking at two dimensional arrays now. What we have looked at is a single dimensional array, right? In Selenium, you when you work, you actually work with a two dimensional array, right? So a two dimensional array looks something like this. It's got rows as well as columns, fine? So these are the rows inside a two dimensional array and these are the columns inside the two dimensional array okay so the rows and columns will be there inside two dimensional array and inside each and every cell i will have a data okay the row number starts with the index 0 1 2 3 and the column number starts with index 0 1 2 3 4 like this okay to make a two dimensional array fine what you need to do is that I'll, I'll make a new class two dimensional arrays now I'll make a two dimensional array like string x equals to new string 
से थ्री कॉमा थ्री और थ्री कॉमा फोर सो वॉट डज दिस रिप्रेजेंट दिस रिप्रेजेंट दैट दिस इज अ टू डायमेंशनल एरे विथ थ्री रोज एंड फोर कॉलम्स और राइट सो आउट हेयर दीज आर द रोज एंड दीज आर द कॉलम्स आई जस्ट नोट इट डाउन फॉर यू सो दैट वेन यू डाउनलोड द कोड यू डोंट हैव एनी डिफिकल्टी इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग इट सो दीज आर द नंबर ऑफ रोज एंड देन कम द नंबर ऑफ कॉलम्स ओके सो इन माई टू डायमेंशनल एरे आई हैव गॉट थ्री रोज एंड फोर कॉलम्स आई विल इनिशियलाइज द वैल्यूज इन साइड माई टू डायमेंशनल एरे आई विल राइट एक्स फर्स्ट आई विल इनिशियलाइज माई फर्स्ट रो राइट आई विल कीप ऑन इनिशियलाइजिंग one row at a time for this two dimensional array so the row number 1 has the zeroth index right this suppose this is the row i want to initialize so this is 0 comma 0 zeroth index zeroth column this will be first uh, row second column this will be second row first column this index will be zeroth row fourth column so i will have to initialize like this zeroth index first column equals to a right i put the letter a inside it since i have got four columns i sorry zero through zero th index is a zero through first index is something different so what i have done is that i have created a two dimensional array in the first row of that two dimensional array right Having three rows and four columns, let me draw it. Right, I have A over here, B over here, C here, and D out here. So this is the zeroth row, zeroth column, first column, second column, and third column. Right. now similarly after this why this is used in selenium i will talk about it in some time what's the practical usage first let us see how to put values inside it similarly i can put values in the second row as well right that is the row 1 1 1 and 1 okay a1 b b1 c1 and d1 so what this will do this will put a1 over here b1 c1 and d1 over here and this is the next row similarly i can initialize the next row as well the third row by just incrementing this index bear with me it's taking a little bit of time but there's a logic behind this why am i doing it you'll soon understand right So this is a two dimensional array having three rows four columns right now the first thing in selenium why do we use a two dimensional array i just showed you an excel file when we read this excel file in selenium we actually read it inside a two dimensional array the excel file will read this to will read sorry the java code will read this excel file into a two dimensional array okay so that's how we work with it we don't read the excel file cell by cell we don't take that headache we see okay fine this is my test case for login get the data for login so for for getting the data we'll write some java code which will read the excel file and we will put the whole data into a two dimensional array right and then my test cases will be reading the data from that two dimensional array right we'll go into the detail of that very soon but for time being just understand to read your data this is very important okay now how to print the two dimensional array i need to write a for loop which can actually print each and every value from this two dimensional array so for that 
first of all i will have to print the number of rows in this array number of rows can be printed by simply writing system dot out dot println i will write uh, rows are concatenated with the value of x dot length okay if i run this this will print rows are three x dot length will give you the number of rows in this two dimensional array and number of columns then you have to write system dot out dot print ln columns are x zero dot length that means the number of columns in the first row if i write x one dot length number of columns in the second row x two dot length number of columns in third row now in our two dimensional array we have same number of columns in every row in java you can make two dimensional arrays with different columns different number of columns in every row you can make it but we generally don't do it in selenium okay so when i run this number of columns are 4 okay so this gives you a very basic thing that you know number of columns and number of rows in your a uh, two dimensional array right now you need to print each and every value present in this two dimensional array right so you write a for loop again for int row number equals to 0 because we want to start from the first row semicolon row number less than the total number of rows semicolon row number plus plus right so this for loop what it will do when it runs for the first time the curse it will go for the first row then it will go for the second row then it will go for the third row right so inside this for loop i will have to write one more for loop for iterating the columns so i will write like this for <clears throat> column number is equal to 0 semicolon column number should be less than okay sorry int column number column number should be less than x that is the array name row num or simply okay let's make it simple i will take an integer over here int number of rows are equal to x dot length and we know that in our two dimensional array we have equal number of columns for all the columns so number of columns are x zero dot length okay so row number is less than total number of rows and column number is less than total number of columns right this will make it simple column number plus plus right so now i will print system dot out dot print ln x brackets row num column number okay when you run this this will print your complete two dimensional array so you have iterated through complete two dimensional array if you want to make the picture a little bit clear and fancy then you can also do it you can write system dot out dot print only okay yes okay you didn't find the logic okay you are not able to understand the logic fine okay so when the outer for loop it's it runs for the first time right when the row number is equal to 0 right inner for loop will run for three times when outer for loop runs for the first time inner for loop runs for three times that means when the row number is 0 inner for loop will run three times and iterate through every column right so for each row i am able to iterate to each and every column that's how it is running when row number is 0 the column number becomes 0 1 and 
when row number is 1 the column number becomes 0 1 and 2 again so this is how this loop works so I will write over here system dot out dot print along with that concatenated the this sign okay and in the end over here I will write system dot out dot print ln that is print move the cursor to new line this will not move the cursor to new line because I have just written system dot out dot print I discussed this in module 1 print will not move make the cursor move to next line when I run this it prints the two dimensional array in a very smart way right in a way which is very very uh, which looks very good to the eyes right right so we have seen the practical utility of two dimensional arrays we also saw single dimensional arrays most of the times you will be using a two dimensional array when dealing with test data okay the only drawback of array is that it cannot it cannot be determined in the beginning that what amount what length of array should be there like I give you the example of um, that airline reservation that is you don't know the number of flights which are coming in okay so now this is all about two dimensional arrays okay one more thing which is left about two dimensional arrays is that for in a string array if I want to put an integer I cannot put it if I make an integer array and I want to put a string inside it I cannot do that so I need an array in which I can put a, diff, a multiple type of data right because in my test data I can have a zip code which is numeric in my test data I can have something like a string so I will have a different kind of test data so in order to cater to that we make something known as an object array if I make an object array like this what is an object object is a inbuilt class inside Java I will talk about this class in detail as we move on with the course okay when we go on to the later modules you will come to know what object class is but the advantage of this class is that it can store different data types the, sorry the advantage of the array of this class is that it can store different data types that is in AR0 I can store a string then in AR1 I can store a number in AR2 I can store another string in AR3 I can store a boolean value in AR4 I can store a decimal number that is a double right so you can do any type of storage you can store anything inside an object array okay so this is about arrays single dimensional two dimensional a little drawback about arrays how arrays are used in selenium and what are object arrays you can store the multiple data types and while working with selenium we actually use the object arrays now let us move forward let us move forward and look at what functions are I'll make a new class and call it functions basics functions are very very important okay and function I can say that it's an independent small unit of execution okay the words they look very heavy right independent small unit of execution but practically I'll tell you what a function is the main is a function out here this is the starting bracket of the main function this is the ending bracket it's this is the scope of main function all the code has to come inside the main function similarly I can make my own function called public static void test me so this is my own function what is public what is static what is void this will be clear to you as you proceed with the course 
okay after some four to five modules it will be very clear to you what public is what static is what void is test me is the name of the function if i write inside my main function system dot out dot print ln in main and in test me i write system dot out dot print ln in test me okay and i run the program it will only print in main it will not print in uh, test me right so basically what i mean to say over here the functions are not executed as they it looks like they will be but it doesn't execute fine and a function is inside the class body all the functions should be inside the class body they should be parallel to each other you cannot make a function inside a function okay this is the starting and ending bracket of a main function if i put this function inside this which many people do i will get an error like this you have to make sure the functions are parallel to each other now if i want to print in test me as well i will have to call this function main function is the one which in which the control comes by default when the program runs for the first time if i write over here test me and i run this code it will it will print in test me and it will also print in main fine because when the control came to main function it actually print went to this test me from test me it went to this function and from this function it printed in test me and then came out and printed in main okay so when you run this you write in test me and then in main fine i can call a function any number of times i have called it three times it will print three times in test me and then in main the order in which the program executes is the serial order in main function test me is called in the beginning then this line then this line and then this line okay fine now i can create any number of functions i can write public static void print name and this function prints selenium okay and i call the print name function in the end if you hit control space bar you will get all the functions available in this class one of them is test main sorry print name and you run this see it prints selenium in the end okay so this is a very very useful thing function is something which can execute itself again and again suppose you have got 100 test cases and all of them require you to log in inside the application so instead of writing the code the selenium code which will log you inside the application in all the 100 test cases you can write the code inside a single function and you can call that function again and again from all the 100 test cases i am just giving you a hypothetical example how we do it practically we'll see it when we learn selenium fine now let's go forward and see some things in function like a function can you can actually pass some values into a function you can pass any number of values inside a function for example i'll make a new class called functions pass in values okay suppose i am making a function here called public void sum all okay just accept public static and void as they are you it will get very clear to you as you proceed with the course fine sum all now this function takes in some parameters that is it says that i take in two parameters int a comma int b i will take in two integers and i will add both the integers or i will take three integers i like it can take in any number of parameters int a comma int b comma int c right 
and I will write over here int sum is equal to a plus b plus c. So when you call this function from the main function, you have to call it like sum all. It is case sensitive. If a is capital out here, you have to keep a capital out here as well. See, it is giving me an error that the method sum all int 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 is not applicable for blank arguments. That is, you have to pass in some numbers from here. You pass 3, 4, 6. What happens is 3 will go into A, 4 will go into B and 6 will go into C. And sum will be equal to A plus B plus C. Now if I print system.out.println sum over here and I run the program, it prints 13. Because out here I am calling this function, passing in some values and printing the result. Similarly, I can call this sum all function any number of times with any different arguments. Okay, when I run this code, it will print the sum of all the three different arguments which I am sending in. So a function can be something like a formula, right? Something a kind of a factory in which you supply something and an output comes up according to the logic applied inside the factory, right? So Basic thing is a function can be called any number of times. There can be any functions in a class. The functions have to be parallel to each other and the number of arguments which you specify over here have to be same as number of arguments you pass from here. I cannot pass a string over here because out here I am writing that the function takes in an integer. Okay, in order to make this line work successfully, I will have to make another function called sum all. But in one file, there cannot be two functions with same name and same input parameters. I will write over here string a. So this line over here will actually be calling this function, although the names of both the functions are same. Okay, so this is just a small example of functions. Now, if I declare inside this function int temp variable is equal to 100. Now, this variable out here is known as a local variable. Okay, local variable means that the life or the visibility of this variable is only inside this function. Similarly, sum is also a local variable. I can use the sum variable only inside this function. If I write system.out.println sum in sum all, the second function, then I will get an error over here saying that if you move your mouse over the error, sum cannot be resolved to a variable because the life of this sum variable is only inside this sum all function. It's not there in this function. Okay, so you have to be very very careful while using this function and the variables. The life of the local variables are only inside the function. In my main function, if I declare string country equals to India, then this variable over here will only be having the life inside the main function. I cannot access this country variable in some all function or some other function. Right? So you need to be very very careful with this. The local variables can only be accessed inside the functions in which they are declared. Right? Now, a function can also return back a variable or a re return back a value. For example, I call the sum all function whatever the result is, I want to check whether that result is greater than 100 or not. Okay, and if it is greater than 100, I want to print result is greater than 100. If it is less than 100, I want to print result is less than 100. Right? So, out here you see the void written in, in the beginning of the function. This void is the return type. Void is the return type. A function can accept 
any number of arguments but a function can just return one value if the function wants to return a value for example i want the sum to be accessed inside the main function when i call this function i want that the function should send me back the sum of the three variables so that i can check whether the sum is greater than 100 or not right so in that case i will change the void return type void means it is nothing void to int that means this function will now return an integer and out here i will have to it's mandatory for me to write a return statement that is return sum if i don't write this i will get an error error stating the method must return return a result of type int right so return the sum back to this place and out here i can catch it in another integer called sum now this sum and this sum are different okay let me not confuse you i'll take the integer as s so the value of this sum will go inside the variable s fine and out here i can check whether if s is greater than 100 then you can print greater than 100 else you can print less than 100 okay Rest two of them, I will just keep it like this. I will not cache the return value. It is not mandatory to cache the return value in the integer, but it is mandatory that if you are putting a return type, then you have to specify a return statement. Okay. When I run this, this prints that sum s is less than hundred, and along with it, I will also print the value of sum, that is value of s. okay now when you run this this will print less than 100 and 13 the value of the sum which is returned okay similarly you can make any type of function for example in the first module when i taught you a for loop i taught you that you can find write a for loop to calculate sum of first 100 numbers right similarly i can write a simple function okay a function like public static void find sum and this will accept a number int n whatever number you pass into n that is if i pass 100 to n or 200 it will find the sum of numbers from 1 till that number and return me back so it should it should return me back so the return type should be integer okay so i will write over here int okay int n uh, sorry int i will de declare that sum is zero in the beginning and write a for loop for int x equals to zero semicolon s x less than the number n x less than equal to the number n which has been passed in and x plus plus okay and inside it you will write sum equals to sum plus x out there when we did the for loop we hard coded 100 here but out here we will write n and then i will write return sum okay now i can call this function from my main function i can write find sum of first 100 numbers okay rather i can directly put, uh, put the value in the variable int x like this okay then int x find sum of first 200 numbers so i can print the sum that is sum of 100 is plus the value of x and 
sum of 200 is plus the value of x again. So out here x will hold the sum of first 100 numbers then 200. So first 100 is passed into find sum. So n will have 100 and this logic will find the sum of first 100 numbers and print it. Then second time n will have 200 and this logic will find the sum of first 200 numbers and print it. When you run this, you find that sum of first 100 number is 50, 50 and sum of first 100 number is, so sorry, first 200 numbers is 201, 200. So this is a very logical thing and a very interesting thing. It's like a factory. You send something inside it and you get something out of it. Okay, right. Now, for example, I'll make one more class called suppose utility functions. I'll take up functions in little detail. They are very important as far as Selenium is concerned. I will make a function. Now I'll make a function which will actually generate a random number between say 1 to 10. Fine it will or 1 to any number n okay you will make a function public static void or integer generate random number you will pass on the number to it int n fine and it will return you back a random number between 0 to that number. Any random number between 0 to that number. Okay. So this can be done. Or let's uh, make it a little bit simpler for you guys. Uh, because if I do this, it will be a little bit complex. Okay. You pass in a number n between 1 to 100 n should only vary between 1 to 100 that is n should be between 1 to 100 and this function should return a number which is less than n okay that is suppose if i pa if i call this function generate a random number and I write over here 77. So this function should return you back 77. Sorry, return you back a number less than 77. Okay. If I write 33, it should return you a number less than 33, any random number. Okay. So for doing that, you first need to understand the concept of math.random class. If I write system.out.println math.random. Now this is a math class and random is a function inside it. This is an inbuilt class and an inbuilt function. If I run this program, this will print a random decimal number. Every time I run this program, this will print the math.random function will return you a random decimal number. Okay, so we are going to take advantage of this, right? If I, I will just code in main method, later on I will move to generate random. If I take this into double, random function returns you a double, which is a decimal number, which is a random one, okay? I multiply the random number by 10 and return it and put the value in D and I print the value of D then every time it will print a decimal number greater than 1 because math.random will return you a decimal number between 0 greater than 0 and less than 1 it will not return you a decimal number greater than 1 in order to make it greater than 1 you need to multiply it by 10 now if I run this program this will always print a number a de decimal number between 0 and 10 if I multiply it by 100, this will print a decimal number between 0 and 100. Okay, now I will take an integer, integer number equals to d. I will equate an integer to a decimal number, to a double. So this is not possible in Java. 
Java says that double cannot be equ equated to an integer because double is something which is having decimal places and integer is something which is not having decimal places. So what I tell Java is that okay, don't worry, forcibly convert it into done an integer. By this thing, by writing this, I am casting it forcibly into an integer. Okay. Now when I run this, obviously I will lose the decimal value. I will lose the decimal value and when I print the number, I will only get a random number. You see that? Okay. Now it is your logic. You have to write such a logic. Okay. I will discuss it. You can discuss it in the forums as well with me. Right. You have to write such a logic that if I call this function generate random number and I pass in suppose 35 into it. This function should return a random number between 0 and 35. You have to use this logic inside it. Okay. Just try this out. Right. Now I will tell you what's the practical usage of functions in Selenium. When I mean practical usage, okay, I mean to say that in Selenium we make a function like this. For example, public static void do login. I will make a function like this. In this function, I will pass two strings username, comma, string, password. Okay. And the return type of this function will be boolean. It will write some, it will have some selenium code in Java inside it, which will log in the user into the application. And after that, it will return true if the login is successful. Fail if the login is a, is a failure. Okay, so I will have the validations and all inside it. Right. So this function would be capable of logging in any user into the application. Similarly, you can also make a function like public static void register user logout. Right. And these functions login, logout, click link and all these will form the basis of our keyword driven or the hybrid framework. Okay. So functions are very, very important. Don't miss on them. Okay, with this we are over with the module 2. You can download the code from the website after logging into your account. Okay, and tomorrow we will start with object oriented programming concepts. Okay, they are the very strong concepts. Some of you if you want to have a background about this, you can actually watch the video and come to the class. You already have the access to the video. Alright, fine. Thank you.